I get most excited about sharing these rounds. Today I played mediocre golf at best, and eked out a score of a single digit handicap. So let's go through it, tallying where we gained and lost strokes. We're playing the first tee time of the day at Pelican Hill, and after hitting a few squirrely ones at the range, I have no problem teeing it forward from the white tees today. My first swing on the course isn't much better. It's a stray drive that winds up in the right rough. And here the plan is just get it back to the fairway. I have about 130 in, and this one has hit at least a groove or two low, and I'm lucky that it trickles onto the green. Let's go, baby. Oh, yes. That's gotta be the ugliest birdie in the history of golf. Indeed I do rely on shaving strokes around the greens. A tough feat at Pelican Hill, where despite the early morning temperatures and dew on the ground, I would guess the greens are stimping at 11, meaning lots of putts are going to meander away from the hole like this, but it's momentum building to make the first one of the day. I've mentioned countless times that the keys to single digit handicap golf are keeping it in play off the tee and being tidy inside 100 yards. There's nothing more penal than having to play three off the tee like we do here on the third hole. We're now playing for double bogey, and we get this one onto the front of the green, but like I said, there are no easy two putts out here today. And despite getting the pace of this one, I'll find myself with about six or seven feet for double now. But the flat stick is cooperating for now. This is our third consecutive block with driver today. And while we got away with it on the first hole, it's going to cost us strokes on both three and four. I get it back in play before hitting a great wedge here to just six or seven feet. But for the first time today, the putter's going to cost us strokes. I tried to hit this one through the break, a mistake on greens running this fast, and we'll go from one under to three over in the span of a couple of holes. We're gonna claw one back here. A huge speed slot on this hole shot my tee shot to only 60 yards from the green. And after learning from my mistake of the pace on the greens on the last hole, I just breathe on this one. <laughs> Generally my approach game costs me the most strokes, but every now and then even I get to fire a dagger. Oh, go in, go in, go in. Ah. <laughs> That's the closest I've been to an ace this season, and I'll clean it up for back-to-back -back birdies. This catches the bottom of the driver face and comes out spinny, and you don't get away with that on a 420-yard hole. And this shot isn't much better, and I'll still have 40 in. This is a great shot with the wedge that gives me just three feet to get out of here with a par, but unfortunately this one lips out. And fog might have robbed us of views of the Pacific today, so instead I got to take in how the other half lives in Orange County. Look at these places. Yikes. Anyway, back to the golf. On eight I hit only my second good drive of the day so that's, far. That's well, satisfying as hell. Yeah. It's down the middle, and I'm laying up to a spot with a hybrid here. It winds up just where I want it, at that 80 to 100 yard range that I've cultivated at Pitch and Putt and I try to hit a 75 yard shot with a sand wedge, thinking that it will roll out down the hill, but instead it hits and stops and I have yet another very tricky 30 foot lag putt here. It rolls about four feet past and I clean it up. I'll register some course knowledge here. Had I gotten all of this drive, the trouble on the right would have been in play. So next time we'll hit hybrid off this tee. Two clubs short though. <laughs> it looked good in the air though, didn't it? <laughs> this is our longest lag putt yet on these tough greens. And I do pretty well for pace and leave myself about five feet here on a putt that's breaking pretty hard to the left. And unfortunately I underread it just a bit. That's about as wild as a scorecard will get. Back to back doubles and back to back birdies. But in the final analysis, it strikes me that I came out the gate cold with driver, and it cost us most of our strokes on the front. If you're having a day like that, don't be afraid to do what I did, and tee it forward so that you can set more manageable expectations and not get angry by having greens out of reach all day. I dump my approach on 10 here into a plug lie in the bunker. I'll take that result. So why the closed face? 
I don't know, I just know. And here I am bragging about how smart I am by closing the club face for this shot. And I don't notice the ball rolling 40 feet off the front of the green. And this is a classic example of having tough greens get in your head. I overread this one and put it through the break. But I'm lucky to make the comebacker here. It's one more squirrely drive on 11. And this one's going to leave us 80 yards out in a bunker, where I catch it a hair fat and leave it in a very tough spot, pitching over a bunker to a tucked pin. That's about as best as I can do. And this one almost drops for par, but on these greens we're always happy with a tap-in, even if it's for bogey. It's difficult to assess exactly where we lose the stroke here, but given that our approach shot leaves us with about 60 or 70 feet, I'm going to blame it on that club rather than the flat stick. This ball crests the ridge but doesn't filter down to the hole as expected. And this 12 foot downhiller suddenly brings 4 putt into play, but I am able to clean it up. Finally we find something with driver here on 13, and it's going to wind up leaving us just 40 in with a flip lob wedge over a bunker. With these greens it's tough to get one near the hole, and it actually rolls out to the fringe. And that putt's a bit conservative, but we'll tap in for par. Great shot. Finally, it's two good drives in a row, but just when that part of the game starts Ooh, yeah. working, another part of the game fails us. That putt rolls a good eight or nine feet past the hole. So like I said, the driver comes back and all of a sudden the approach game and the putter lead to a frustrating double bogey here. On the plus side, the morning fog is cleared and we're finally enjoying some of that good SoCal weather. And maybe that's a good distraction from another blow up hole here. We hit a lousy approach shot and then blade a wedge over the back of the green. And this is a very tough up and down and leaving it above the hole is a particularly bad miss. And now we're putting pressure on the flat stick to get out of here with only a double. It's a good stroke on this one, and let's put this hole behind us. 130 has been a good number for me today, and this one's also at the pin, but above the hole here is just so dangerous. Even this one winds up four feet past. But we will clean it up and finally get off the bogey train. 17 is the signature hole here, but unfortunately the fog is back and blocking our view of the ocean. It's a drive that threatened to cost us one, but it stays in play and allows us to lay up here to wedge distance. I'm thinking this one is going to kick hard right off the hill, but it actually hits and stops. Come on, come on, come on. We almost drain a bomb here, but like I say, we're happy to be back on the par train. 18 is a great finisher here. It has an elevated approach shot that I grab one less club for. And I'm worried it's not quite going to get there, but indeed it does and leaves me about 25 feet for birdie here. And with the challenging greens here, I am more than happy to wind up with a tap in for par. The title of this video was Play Bad Golf and Be a 7. Well, if I played like this every day, I'd actually be a 9. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean I'm lying or that the handicap system is wrong, and I'm noticing a lot of misinformation about that in the comments, so stay tuned for a video explaining exactly how the handicap system works.